Hey, how's it going? Well, here I am back at on top of the ridge again, just to the, on the north side of the village. I've walked this a number of times now. Hey, did you like the, the image of the beautiful mushroom in the beginning anthill? Gorgeous. Yeah, so I'm a little sweaty and red. <laughs> yep, anyway, so here I am. I'm off again. Uh, just on a little hike. It's been pouring rain a lot. Uh, last couple of days it hasn't, but there's been a lot of rain. And if you you might have heard something of uh, floods down in the central plains of Thailand and Bangkok. And I imagine the rains that came here had an effect there. Although it's been raining a lot down there too, so probably more of that probably. Yeah, anyway, I thought I'd do another video. Today, okay, today, every maybe week and a half or two weeks, I know I'm, I'm always saying, end of industrial civilization, and I mean it, yeah, it's our only, only chance and all that, but I'm also going to a cafe that's really beautiful, sitting by a small stream, to have coffee and cheesecake. I will say, I don't know about the cheesecake, well the cheesecake's made locally of course, but the coffee is totally local, like it's, there's coffee trees on the land that I live on, and all around here. And the nice thing is, it's, you know, coffee, the best coffee grows in the shade, you know. And uh, I think my friend, maybe it was Goon. So, uh, maybe it was Goon. Someone said to me, oh yeah, the, at some point the king came up to the village here. And there's pictures and stuff. And suggested, two, two things I know of. Suggested growing coffee. I, I think, I think they were, tr the king and government and stuff, back in the long days, were trying to change uh, people get people to grow coffee rather than um, opium poppies and stuff you know because of the whole drug thing and all that so a lot, a lot of places up in the north grow coffee and the coffee I drink I get just a, a different cafe that that roasts their own coffee and it's all local from the mountains here it's like forget the hundred mile diet this is the two mile diet as far as coffee is concerned anyway yeah and I buy green coffee and I just roast it in a pan Anyway, so I'm going to go get cake and coffee as a nice treat. While you can. Yeah? Anyway, yep, so, but the one goal of mine today is I'm continuing to try and learn all the trails up here, as I've said on other videos. And I, I noticed when I was going down, you know, down that ways, a kilometer or so or two, and then down, I noticed another trail going up further. And I know from looking at a map that there's a, a rise, a hill slash bit of a ridge up there too. So today I'm going to go up there, check it out, and see maybe there's a trail that comes down from there too. And uh, yeah, so I'm learning all the trails. Pretty much my favorite thing to do, I'd say. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Um, the interview, I was talking about interviews before, and the, the interview with Wolfgang came out, and it was so nice. Everyone said nice things, and uh, yeah, that was just such a great honor and f fun to do. I don't get interviews that much. Mostly I live in a blissful obscurity, <laughs> for better or for worse. Anyway, yep, so that's that. The great, maybe I'll put a I'll link that here. I may wait a couple of days to do this video because I just put up some videos a few days ago. So I don't want to I don't want to crowd things too much. I guess that's my strategy. Anyway, yeah. So there you go. Um, I was talking about the last video. I was talking about well, maybe the last or one of them. Oh yeah, about referencing Derek Jensen at the end. Ah, damn. It was a great reference because what he said was so brilliant, but I'm sort of getting tired. Anyway, I said that I unfriended and then I, I kept following and then I got tied into another stupid ass con thing. And so then I'm not following anymore. So pfft. I know everything he has to say anyway, pretty much. Just keeps, doesn't say anything new, just what he's been saying for Endgame. Anyway, that sound, that's a big diss. I'm sorry, that's not fair. Read his books Endgame, Walking on Water. No matter what you think of the politics, the, whatever that is, I really do recommend those books. If you're interested in this, 
But if you're not, then don't. Anyway, right, so up we go, continuing up, way up high on the ridge. You can hear the beautiful insects. Actually, I'm going to flip it and just do a, if I just shut up for a minute, there's an incredible cicada song. Quite often when I'm sitting here just listening, I think of something John A. Livingston said. Something like the two envirom environments, if you want to put it that way, ecosystems that he was loved or moved by or in that realm the most were tropical forests and the high Arctic. I think I know what he, he means by that. I mean, I've only been to the High Arctic once. I went to Baffin Island with my grandparents and my cousin Peter when I was a teenager. But, but that short time rings with me today, to this day. Yeah, it's incredible. And of course, now I'm immersed in this forest completely, and more, more, as completely as I can be, I guess. This is so amazing. So much to learn here. Holy mushrooms galore right now. Look at all this. Oh, gorgeous. They're big too. They're like three, four inches across. They're all up here. Jum, 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 jum. Okay, so here we are, right another join. This one, I call joins where the trail's kind of uh, split. So this trail's heading off kind of to the north-ish, I'd say. So I'll explore that another day. That should be really interesting. But today I'm going to take this one down because, of course, I've got cake and coffee on the brain. And it's getting close to time for a little rest. Anyway, so I climbed up, followed this trail. It's, a lot of it's pretty clear, some of it not too, but not bad. Anyway, continue on. You know, um, now that I'm following this trail a bit, I can totally clear it. So, at least at this stage, it's downhill, but it's fairly shallow slope, I'd say. Uh, it's really following a ridge line going down. It'll probably be like this for a little ways, and then as it gets closer down to where the stream is, it'll be, uh, it'll get really steep. Um, so all, all the, everything here, when it gets down to the small river that goes to Mekampong, everything becomes really steep there, which, which makes so much sense from, an, you know, the, the river, the river, the roads down the valley, you know. How many thousands and thousands and thousands of years did that, though? Anyway, so we're up here. It's nice and flat. It's beautiful, open, op relatively open forest. I know it looks uh, kind of dense, but 
you could actually walk through the bush here pretty easily. There's some, you know, stuff on the ground, like growing stuff on the ground to tangle you up, but not too much. Not too much. Oh yeah, look at this. See these logs? Someone's built little stairs up. So it's probably a fair number of people walk up through here. Oh, it looks like there's a little trail here too. Yeah, anyway, we're getting down and starting to get steep again. But you can see what they've done here. They've put up some logs, this little step here. Continues down a ways as well. Probably this would be for, not to make, not, not really, Oh, look at this one over there, too. Jeez, I wonder what's going on. Anyway, it's probably, you know, during the rainy season, it's just, uh, like water here. Water is flowing down this side, so they have this up here in steps, so, because it gets very, very muddy and slippery during the rainy season. That's what I reckon. Oh, okay. See that blue down there? Those are water tanks. So this is where the water for the village comes in. So that's probably why it's a little opened up a bit here. A little bit open. Anyway, we'll see where this goes next. Okay, right. I was wondering how they would get those tanks up. <laughs> They're really big. But look, they've cut a fairly nar narrow... Well, it's a road, but you wouldn't drive a car up it. It's like a really wide trail. So I'm going to follow this down, see what it goes right where I'm wanting to go. Okay. Wow, look at There's some houses here. So I'm coming down pretty close to the the road at the top end of the village but look at this look up 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 ah how rare <laughs> you know when you're walking through so I don't have my, my special mic here I'm just talking through the phone so I'll talk close when you're walking through the jungle you know you sort of can't see jungle of course you can't see much more than 50 feet on any side of you right but occasionally they'll open up and you know when you hit those top ridges, which I've walked on quite a bit, like that ridge there I've walked along. When you're up there it's a different story, right? But still, it's forested so it's still uh, not wide open like being out in the, uh, in the above tree line or something. But uh, every now and then you get these beautiful openings. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And look at that sky. It's not raining. Woo! Okay, hey, how's it going? Okay, I guess I don't usually do this. I usually just keep all my videos in the woods, but since I talked about the cafe, maybe I should show it. There's another really beautiful place just up, just up a bit higher from here. That's really nice too, called Chum Nok Chum Mai, and it's really great. But it tends to be a bit crowded, and they have a really great co uh, cakes too. Um, but uh, it's it's crowded. It's really beautiful because there's an incredible view. So <laughs> people are laughing at me. I'm talking to myself again. Um, <clears throat> right, so here's, like, there's a sign. Okay, it's showing up yellow in the screen, but it's actually red. <laughs> Must be a reflection. Anyway, um, yeah, so I, I'm going to just show you. And the other thing I love about this place is this part I like to sit on is on the floor. So I really love to... I really sorry, don't want to, I don't like tables and chairs anymore. <laughs> I just don't like them. And look over here, they have a little koi pond. That bright, actually, you know what, let's see if I can refocus it. Dear, oh, there you go. So there's little, well, decent sized fish in there. And you can sit by that pond. Um, you can sit by the little stream and then if you like tables and chairs you can sit up there oops where are we sit up there there's a couple of people up there there are the, the people up there are the ones laughing at me and okay and look even when you come to visit look uh -huh. hey sweetie she comes to visit and I think her buddies and family come too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, beautiful. Also here, there's these beautiful umbrellas. Classic Thai umbrellas. They don't, when it's raining, they close this off. So it's been closed off a few times lately. Right. Okay, so I'll just finish this off. Hope everyone's doing great. 
And uh, à la prochaine. See you next time. There was something else I wanted to... Oh, okay, this is out of context now. But I meant to mention one great thing about... Of course, when you're in, in the... One of the beautiful things about traveling in the woods or in natural areas is the way it can open up your senses. You know? It's very easy, I think, in modern living for our senses to shut down because we need to shut them down I think to somehow cope with it or many people or most I don't know anyway but one thing that's great about walking in the forest here is always have to be conscious of what's on the ground right as I've said over and over again got to keep an eye out for snakes Especially the ones that look like leaves that just like to lie around and be quiet. Um, so, A, it make, brings your focus there, but also, as I find as I walk, I also have to keep my peripheral vision activated too. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm seeing a wide range. And I know my feeling is for ways to become, uh, you know, we, we're so sight oriented that I think working our sight a certain way, like trying to, to widen our, our, our vision, our peripheral vision, you know what I mean? And just be more conscious of, of everything that's around us. Of course, the peripheral vision is more, I think, more motion uh, sensitive. Like I can see my fingers move, but I can't really, when I stop, I can't see the fingers that well. Anyway, so, right, so walking along, peripheral vision activated, everything going. Of course, listening is really important too. Uh, so it's very similar when doing the similar things in Canada, say. Although, say in the Rocky Mountains or whatever, I'd be walking and being aware of different things. Not snakes, but bears. Black bears, grizzly bears, cougars, that sort of thing. So it's a similar thing, a bit different, because the forest here, is, things are closer. So the, to me, the awareness is, is a little different, but it's a similar idea. Anyway, I recommend doing that. Bye.